welcome to the NBS Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Angry Bird Noises! Okay, so do I need to play the theme song or anything? If you have the Angry Bird theme song on in standby, I'll worry about you deeply. Uh, you know for copyright reasons I can't, but I can do it with my voice, which sounds bad, so no. So anyway, also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Teacher, my name is not Dave. I couldn't think of anything, so I just went with John Cena reference. <laughs> I need to see For no that reason. one. Oh I boy! I need to see that one. I'll, I'll show you after the podcast. Yeah. See, here's the thing. I, I seen Transformers Bumblebee, and he was not bad that in that one. That has nothing to do with it. Oh no, I know, but it's John Cena related. So yeah, he, he's not bad in it. Like he's a pretty credible actor. I'm not even talking about. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just waiting for you to play the entrance music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, I just at home. In today's episode, we are going to review season 8, episode 22, What Lies Beneath. In this episode, the young six cram for Twilight's history of magic in a Questra exam when they discover a part of the school of friendship that no one else knows about. So, before we head into the reviews, let's get first impressions out of the way. And Silver, what do you think? Well, when I say angry bird noises, I'm mostly thinking of uh, Silverstream confronting her fears. (laughs) Because, I got it, looks like she's going to peck someone's eyes out. Peck their eyes out and claw their, yeah, privates out. Oof. Oh, okay. I'm, well, I'm we tra- weren't even tra- going. Tra- he wasn't even going to go there, but okay, Norman. <laughs> yeah, Norman. Wow, way to get all weird on us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, uh, man. Why do you, why do you do this? <laughs> just because I can. Oh boy. Well, just because you can doesn't mean you're shrewd, and this is a prime example of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I enjoyed this. This was a great outing for the student six because uh, you get to learn a lot more about them, a lot more about uh, their fears and seeing them overcome them. And so you see them uh, rise above themselves in a sense, which is what I think this school is really meant to do. Uh, There's the argument, oh, you can't make someone be friends. Well, you can't, but you can help someone become their best self, which makes... Uh, making friends a little bit easier, or at least facilitates it. That is true. And of course, there's memes galore. <laughs> I guess the downside is that this is something I've always wanted to have happen with the stu- with the main six teaching the student six, and it turns out that the Tree of Harmony is a way better teacher. I mean, it is a tree that's thousands of years old. Should be sentient, but it is. I mean, magic is a thing. Have you never read The Giving Tree? Oh, I have. Since your trees are all the rage. Yeah. <laughs> and in the Giving Tree, they actually do cause rage because that kid was a spoiled brat. Very oh, much so. so. Eh. Oh, boys. So, um, that's about it, Silva? That's it for a first impression, yeah. All righty then. Seppi, what about you? I don't remember a gosh darn thing about this episode. <laughs> what? How come? <laughs> I don't know. I just don't remember anything other than, like, Silverstream confronting her fear about a certain movie villain. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I don't remember anything else. Really? Well, no. actually, no. I take that back. There, There is one part that I remember revolving around a schmolder. Hmm. <laughs> But even then, it's like, I don't really remember much, and I kind of feel bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Did you at least take a rewatch? Nope. I gave you guys... I gave you a few days beforehand when doing this. Norman, you should know better than to trust me. <laughs> With assignments. What uh, of Celestia. Yep, I, I should. I'm a bad student. Yep. Well, actually, no. I'm a good student when it comes to art, but everything else I'm terrible at. <laughs> at least nowadays. Back back in high school, oh, I would have done this. So, basically, you're drawing up short. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty oh, much. Boys. Okay, okay. Oh, dizam, yo. <laughs> uh, I, I think you need to go and visit Mr. Quill for your detention later on. 
Okay. <laughs> Straight up play. Are we going to be doing some old school? Oh, no. <laughs> well, so, be, does this right mean we that... can go watch Ghostbusters? Oh, see, now you're hooked. Now you need to watch Ghostbusters 2 and then play Ghostbusters the video game. Okay. And then realize they should have just stopped with one. <laughs> uh, boys. But anywho, let's... No spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, as for me... Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I do like the dynamic of the young six here. And yeah, I, I always say the student six, but it seems that the wiki is calling them young six. Hmm. Oh, well, if a wiki says it, it must be true. I don't like it. Well, what what's Samuel yeah. Jackson like say? Like, um, I understand that's your thing, but I, I, I forgot. Isn't that the thing? But, but anywho. Uh, for I got the things. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, um, as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the students' dynamic. And I do like how they felt bad when a certain Pegasus told them that they're not worthy. So we'll get into that. Sorry, we'll get into that more when we reach it. But I have to say, this was a pretty fun episode. Yes. And ooh, let's just say that there's a lot of things to cover. But anywho, if you have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go watch it first. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And so, let's start with our student six being in class, learning about the Tree of Harmony and stuff. For us, we're veterans of this class because we experience it with our main six. But for the student six, they got no idea what's going on at all because they question that Hey, does the tree grow a castle or what? Because we don't understand this. Does the tree want us to buy all their playsets and toys or whatever? I, I don't really get this. I right, want you to buy all their playsets and toys. <laughs> yeah. So, anywho, as they finish class, Twilight says, Okay, there's a test on the tree or whatever it is. I don't care. All I know, there's a test. Go study and I hope you... I wish you guys good luck. And as the student go out, they just talk about how they don't get equestrian history at all. Like, this is just so confusing. And um, Sandbar here says, I want to do a, whatchamacallit, this, um, I won't say meetup. Study group. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. It's been so long since I used that word. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, they say, oh, do you want to do a study group so we can... Uh, cram information about equestrian history in our brains and Gellis says you know what the library is not a place to go for study equestrian history about the tree of harmony we should go as a tree <laughs> and everybody laughed except Sandbar because you're mocking his culture <laughs> uh, I, I think he took a giggle out of it too <laughs> but anywho they are in the library and they're studying about the tree of harmony and stuff and it is kind of Strange and confusing if you were, you, if you haven't been following the show. So if you just imagine this, you just came into season eight, and they're talking about the tree, which is kind of what now? I I don't get this. Like this is so confusing. It's like an in joke that you need to watch from season one just to get it. Get it? Well, that's the thing. They're they're basically doing continuity one hundred and one. And how vexing it is. You, th you think it's easy to always celebrate continuity. It is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you should do you should do a convention about continuity. That's a lot of fun. A panel. Something well, like that. there'll be there'll be time for that. Yeah. So uh, I don't know which convention, but True, true. But anywho, as we carry on, we get to see the student six here being all well, confused and whatnot. And Long story short, they got no... Too late. <laughs> well, let's just say this. They got no idea what the tree is about and they get distracted. Um, Silverstream here is distracted by plumbing while Yona here is sleeping. And she's arachnophobic. Who knew? Well, now everybody, because she's vocal with her fears. <laughs> Granted, I bet arachnophobia is less of a problem after uh, falling, but we'll get to that at season's end. Yep, true that, true that. But anywho, as they banter on, Cozy comes in and kind of is there. And... Oh. Yeah. Kratos! <laughs> Dominos! Uh, please. But anywho, 
Um, Cozy's there talking and stuff, and uh, they're just saying that, oh, we're here to study on the test and whatnot, and Ocellus here turns something into Twilight and kind of, not really mock, but just play around with the students as the professors, um, starting with Twilight saying, oh, um, test going on and blah, 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 and I think what Gallus says that, oh, uh, give us cheat sheets. She turns into Applejack says, Now I can't give you cheat sheets. That's not honest. And somehow, Cozy comes in and ruins the moment by telling the student five that they're not worthy and they should consider themselves lucky to be in Equestria because they're different. Ooh, that's terrible. Racist! (laughs) That's racist! Yep, yep. Boys. So... Anybody want to see anything about this? I already did. Just that I'm amazed that there's st- that they still even talk to her after a line like that. Oh well, she, she has something to say at the end. But anywho, with that, uh, the student six here becomes a little bit agitated with each other because their 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 friendship is kind of waning, and it seems that there's a sound at the back. The the vents or something like that, and when Silverstream sees it, she calls the guys to check it out, and it seems that the vent leads into a underground cavern, which is kind of strange, really strange. Yes, that's not the strangest thing in Equestria. Honestly, I still think the Pinkie Pie secret chamber was stranger. Uh, you mean the uh. Pinky Cave? Na 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 na. Pinky Cave! <laughs> yeah. But anywho, uh, in the cave, they discover that it's full of crystals and whatnot, and it's rather strange. And they meet up with Twilight, and this Twilight says um, she's noticing them, and they're not friends. Like, their, their friendship is kind of waning, and it seems like they're. Not friends. So Twilight says that I'll give you a test. I think she says more than that. She's like, no, no, unacceptable. All must be friends or die. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. So wait, you're saying that uh, the situation right now is unacceptable? Pretty much. (laughs) Uh, Lemon grab. Uh, But anywho. Yes. Um, I I think when uh, Twilight flips out, uh, I think what Silverstream says, Tess, and yeah, that's a good idea. Tess is much better. So, uh, Twilight poofs them away and gives them a test. So, each creature or student here has their own test. So, I'm just going to streamline things and make things faster because if we focus on them too much, it'll be kind of a woozy. So, we start off with Gallus. Gallus here is claustrophobic. Um, his test is to not die in a grim, crushing death in a small space. Yes, I think phobia comes from when he was hatching as a chick. Yes. That assumes griffins aren't born, you know, like a lion. Ah, mammals. Yes, that is good. That, that's, that's, yeah. That's a no- nerd debate point. Yeah, true that. But that is a discussion for another day. So before I carry on, do we want to cover one creature's Sorry, one character's um, intro and end it, or we just follow the flow of the show? I say cover the intro and then end it. All right. Because okay. it's easier to, easier to track. All right. Then. So anyway, start with Gallus. So his test is he's trapped in a small room with rave lights everywhere. So whenever he touches a pink rave light, rooms get smaller. And if he touches a white rave light, it gets bigger. So that's the challenge for him there. Uh, and if he and if he touches a red light, he gets the strong bad remix. <laughs> the system is down. The system is yeah. down. <laughs> the system is down. Go keep going. The system is down. And this oh, is God. why the episode goes long. <laughs> so <laughs> you, uh, Gellis breathes in and faces fear, and also is worried about his friends and. I think it's the lion heart in him that forces him to face his fear and get to his friends. 
So once he discovers how to escape from the trap, he does so and is successful. Yay, he plays what? Um, red light, green light, essentially, and escapes. So yay on him. One, two, three, red light. <laughs> so next creature or next character is... Uh, let's go Yona. Yes, Yona. So Yona is creeping or is scared of the cave that she's in. And it's not a really good looking cave. It's full of creepy spiders. And it is established earlier on that Yona is scared of spiders. And the room she's in, oh boy. Let's just hope that audience at home, you're not arachnophobic. Because there's a lot of red eyes looking at her and chasing her down. Ooh, that's not fun. I'm ca- I'm counting that as a transgression. <laughs> oh. Yay! So you're actually ahead of Safi on that right now. Who, me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can't help it, man. Yeah, you can. You're just not doing nothing about it. Oh, uh, all right. I'm docking Safi for using a double negative. <laughs> English is important, young young children. No, it ain't. So, anywho. Uh, them spider eyes be chasing the Yonas all around. And, yeah, like, <laughs> there's a lot of red eyes. Like, woo-wee. Ain't fun. And she breaks well, down. Sorry? Then Yoda should really be looking for some Visine. <laughs> Why? For dry eyes. <laughs> red eyes. <laughs> Visine gets the red out. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. So, wow, indeed. So, anywho, Yona breaks down and starts cowering, and she kind of screams and, yeah, screams in horror until a spider comes along and talks to her. And I, I think by this point, she already accepted her fate. And it seems that, yeah, um, once you calm down, and face your fears, um, you get to understand them and talk to animals. Okay, that's interesting. And yeah, they, they only just want to help and be friends with her. So yay, Yona has friends. Honestly, I feel like this is a missed opportunity. She could say, Yona, remember Professor Fluttershy say, smile and say hello. See how animals react. This one, it just feels like it's a gimme. It's like she she's not really affecting change. It's happening for her. True that, true that. I do feel the same. Like, it's kind of funny yet okay. But it feels like... How do I put it? It's like, okay, she's quote-unquote facing her fears, but it's not really doing so. Like you just said, it's like a give me. Like she's getting a mulligan out of this. So technically she's not afraid of spiders anymore. Okay. Yeah. How convenient. I know, right? And let's head to Smolder. And Smolder here is trapped in a room with two other ponies having a tea party and whatnot. And she asks if they could help her out. And, well, the two ponies says, Oh, why don't you join us for tea parties? And Smolder being the uh, tomboy of the group and being the rough and gruff dragon that she is, says no on so many levels. No. She flies around and kind of ends up in the same place. So she's saying that, okay, I need to get out of here to help my friend. So what do I need to do? And the two pony says, join us for a tea party. And you need to dress as a princess. And... Golly. And that's how Schmolder became a brony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. But yeah, like she puts on the dress, she puts on the makeup, she puts on the crown, and she's enjoying it. Yay! <laughs> Gosh. Although I feel like these two ponies should be in a hallway, uh, just staring at her. Come dine with us, Smolder. <laughs> uh, they did that in a later episode. Oh wait, in the previous episode. <laughs> Yeah, and I loved it, but, you know, the trend never dies. Uh, true that, true that. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to go forward or backwards a bit. So, Gallus escapes and goes back to the um, vents, and Smolder does too. 
Gala says, or Gala asks, what happened to you? Smolder takes off the dress and rubs the makeup off and says that you never saw any of that. Got it? I will burn you and your family. I don't have a family. Aw. But I'll still burn you. Then it, everyone then feels bad for for Gallus. Again. Aw. But still, I do like the interaction. It's really fun. So, Gallus says the most... Well, how do I put this? This is one of those character-defining moments for Gallus and uh, also Smolder when Gallus says that if it were any other dragon or griffin, we would have GTFO, but somehow we can't. Like, we can't leave our friends. I guess we're not the stereotype anymore. So anyway, you go there, I go home, and let's look for our friends. Yeah, that sounds about right. I mean, I've, I'm not a big fan of uh, of this stereotype that, you know, dragons are all greedy, and as are griffins. It's. It sounds like you're saying your birth determines your personality. Basically, I feel like you're indulging in a stereotype just so you can break it. And I don't know. And I don't think that's a good representation. It sends the wrong message to kids. Oh, true, 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 true. But the show has always, uh, well, I won't say been, but the show acknowledges this from the very beginning, where the student six here are a bit different from, uh, the stereotypes of the show like even what uh gabby was a bit different from the other griffins and what uh i i don't have a good analogy for the yaks because yeah the only time we see yaks anyone who's not prince Ruth- rutherford <laughs> kind of yeah if if anything rutherford's worse than the average yak <laughs> yeah but he was our first introduction yes but then there's also uh but like with Gabby and with Pharynx, they were born different. Not a different experience, not a life-altering event that changed their perception, no. They were just born different. And I always worry when you go down the path of you were born different. But what about the... Uh... Wait, wasn't Pharynx like Thorax's brother? Oh, did I say Pharynx? I should have said Thorax. Yeah, ah, yeah right. I was going to say, it's like, no... Uh, yeah, even if you put that aside, like the dragons, uh, not including the comics, we got what Ember, and she's a bit different from the others, but still retaining her dragon self. She's willing to accept change slowly. I will well, see, let you go to the school as long as you stop singing the song. So, so I can't take it anymore. I guess I like Ember's presentation more because she was holding with values, strength. Uh, aggression traits that get you far in the culture but it wasn't like oh I'm born hating friendship no it's just born with a different born and raised in a culture with different values true that and I would say uh, Smolder here uh, is the same thing too like she is from the dragon land she has that rough gruff dragon thing but once she's in Equestria slash Ponyville she softened up. She enjoys some of the things that she weren't able to and not being judged for it because it's... It, how do I put this? It's one of those scenarios where uh, you're in... Um, I, I think the closest I can think of is uh, you're the only girl in a house of boys. So you can't really like girly things because, well, your brother, all of your brothers are into sports and whatnot. So... For you to like dolls and whatnot, yeah, you're quote unquote asking for trouble. Are you? <laughs> kind of. If you're the only girl in the household, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm the younger of two brothers, and my mom was the only female in the family, but she had us all outnumbered. Yeah, I mean, mothers are a totally different story because she can whoop your ass, like sisters or little sisters. Nah, they, 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 they no, no, no. Also, that's a. That's a token for the sweetie bot there, Norman. What? Ass? Yeah, ass Yee. is good. Like, um... Oh, oh, so ass is good for it, but every other curse word ain't. No, because here's the thing. I The only reason why I'm okaying ass is because uh, Ashley Balm said it in her interview with Everfree Network. So, yeah. 
interesting justification. I would have gone with it's simply not a four letter word. Oh, true that too. <laughs> no, but this one was way back when. When I was listening but, to it, but, I was surprised. But, but silver right, is a four letter four letter word. <laughs> It's also a three-letter word, <laughs> depending on context. Oh boy! So anywho, uh, get it back on track. Uh, or do you have something more to say, Silver? Well, if you want, I can trigger the sweetie bot a few times. No, we don't need that. So anyway, um, go ahead. Oh boy! So anyway, um, we mentioned uh, what Smolders thing? We mentioned um, them meeting up. Okay, uh, what else? I'm just getting back on track here, and let's go for Ocellus. Yes. Ocellus is trapped in a cave with old-style changelings, changelings with holes. And they say that, yeah, um, we're going to go suck the love out of the ponies in Ponyville, like you command. And Ocellus just says, what? I- I- I'm different? What? No, no, I don't look different. And when she looks into a mirror, she's Queen Chrysalis. <gasps> oh, no. Does this kind of get another return of Chrysalis? No. <laughs> I think DWK would say so. <laughs> uh, everyone, go look at his review on the final episode. It's just part one and it's really good. <laughs> but hey, anyway, yeah, anyway um, as she mopes in sadness, Smolder comes along and finds her and tries to save her. But holy bugs. Um, it, it seems that even Smolder know who Chrysalis is. And Smolder says, like, what? You're changing. Change it back. But, oh no, um, I am hideous and whatnot. Oh, don't look at me. Oh. Oh, woe is me. Yeah. And I think there's a dab from Ocellus. <laughs> yeah, when she says, I'm hideous. I, I see the picture. I'm thinking the same thing. She's dabbing. Oh, did you see the comic about it? Yeah, but dabbing. <laughs> Oh man, the comic was fun. I'm not gonna really tell it. Anyway, um, so Smolder tries to snap Ocellus out of it and telling that this is kind of the tree's trick on her. Is it? It's just as all a test and whatnot. And Smolder just mumbles something, and Ocellus just says, uh, "What did you say?" And Smolder admits that she likes cute stuff and she likes to dress up and have tea parties and wanted to do a secret tea party with Ocellus and well she's since she wants to be here so well she's not going and Ocellus says oh no I want to come I want to come and change back to normal so yay tea party saved the day yeah why not why yeah. not it, it, it worked with Fluttershy and Discord oh true that true that but at the same time too I, I do like how Ocellus giggles at the fact that Smolder likes tea parties like, I will end you <laughs> with my with my dragon fire. Oh. I feel like that's sort of a get out of jail free card. If if ever you're you're being embarrassed, you just say, Oh, dragon fire, and people will respect you too sweet. Yeah, but there's the thing, Silver, once you use that all the time and someone challenges you to it, you have to prove it. So then you break out the barbecue skewers and we're good. <laughs> yeah. So anywho, uh we go to uh, Gallus. Gallus flies around and spots uh, Silverstream. And Silverstream here says, Oh, be quiet. The Storm King is around. Um, he's going to get us and stuff. And Gallus does the whole same song and dance where he says that this is just a test from the tree and you shouldn't be scared about it. Like, this is just a test. The Storm King is not real. But for Silverstream, this is really real. And she has to get past that. And Gellus admits that he's claustrophobic and admits that um, he was trapped in a hole and, you know, you know the whole song and dance. So, with that, um, Silverstream smothers or gets some courage to yell at the Storm King about how he's a terrible villain and the movie villain was not great. Tempest Shadow was way more interesting than you, and the movie was about her, and you were just a brief cameo. Yeah, and your movie, and your appearance in X Men Origins Wolverine was not great. Angry bird noises. Oh, funny thing, like we we say that he wasn't good in uh, My Little Pony, 
but he was great in Spider Man. Who did he play? Um, the Kingpin. Oh, okay. Wait, which Spider Man? There's a surprising wealth to choose from. The Spider Verse. Sorry, my bad. Ah, uh, yes. I was gonna say if you thought it was Spider Noir, I was going to kick you in the nuts. <laughs> no, Spider Noir is played by Nicolas Cage. Come on. Oh, good. You do know that knowledge. I do. Good, Norman. I, good. I am geeking out at that fact because Nicolas Cage is awesome. Especially in Con Air. Yeah, especially in uh, Teen Titans Go as Superman. <laughs> There's so much things to say about that movie. But anywho, uh, what else did we say? Yeah, okay. Um, after Silverstream admits that the Storm King was a poopy pants, um, she has faced her fears and gives Gaddis a hug. So yay, my shots from Shipping! Left. Yes, I know! Yay! What? But shipping, this is spawn shipping galore. I know. Now people are kind of mad because their ship between Sandbar and Gallus is non-canon anymore. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the tragedy. I guess <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I don't see why. Sorry? I don't see why you have to abandon a ship. Oh, all well, of the ships, I guess. So anywho, uh, as the Student six gathers around and saying, okay, is everyone here? No, uh, Sandbar is not. He's still missing. Yona comes in with her army of spiders. And fun fact here, all of her friends kind of freak out at the fact that Yona is with an army of spiders. And they fly too. So that's kind of thematic. So yay. <laughs> How about we conquer them with the Legion of Spies? <laughs> spiders! Spiders! An army Legion of Spiders! <laughs> oh my god, that took me back! Oh, god. I think. Oh, I think I broke Norman again. <laughs> no, I think you did. That took me back, man. Like, oh man. Uh, and see when he was doing the movie. Oh my god, that was fun. Sorry. There, there are real monsters out there, and I'm one of them. Now give me the gun, or I'll attack you with my legion of spiders. <laughs> <coughs> oh my goodness. Mm, all right. Mm. So, anywho, um, the spider, I forgot what his name is called. He has a... Oh, a spindle. So, anyway, spindle says oh, he knows where Sandbar is and brings the main five, or the student five, to him. And... Sandbar here is in a very interesting room. Um, he is kind of in a long corridor where Rainbow Dash and Rarity needs his help to save Equestria. And every time when Sandbar tries to say something like, oh, um, I, I need to help my friends first, Rarity or Rainbow Dash would peer pressure him into forgetting his friends and just help them doing what they need to do. And, and the last time he just says, I need to find my friends, they're in trouble. And Rainbow Dash and Rarity says, Oh, we're disappointed in you because you don't want to save Equestria and whatnot. And Sandbar here says, I used to look up to you guys because you were the epitome of friendship and whatnot. And you saying that I should ditch my friends. Oh no, I am disappointed in you guys. You suck. And perfect timing because Sandbar's friends are behind him when he said that. And yay, much awesomeness. Loyalty. Woohoo. And all it took was breaking down his hero worship. Yeah. Way to embitter him against his against the greatest ponies in Equestria, Tree Harmony. You are terrifying. But at the same time, he already knew it was a it was a tree, so he he still has hero worship. I don't think he. Well, he didn't know it was. He a tree didn't when he know. Said that to him. He did. Like in the end, he knew it was a test. So anywho, uh, as the student six go to the event. Uh, it's close. Oh no. Oh no. So Twilight, a floating Twilight, appears and they say, You're not Twilight, are you? <laughs> She's too sparkly for that. Even though her name is Twilight Sparkle. Oh yeah. She is very sparkly. True that. Well, it turns out the Tree of Harmony is just very literal minded. <laughs> but anywho... Um, they figured out it's the Tree of Harmony and they get even more confused because, what, the, the tree is now hit by Twilight? What? what? I'm so confused. What is this? 
<laughs> but anywho, the tree says, I'm a growing thing. As I grow, I evolve and I get new magical powers to buy our playsets and toys. So anyway, since you passed the test, you guys are stronger as friends now. And I deem you best friends for life. Now get out of here. Although, I'm just thinking the line, you chose what you saw in my roots, not me. <laughs> All I'm thinking is that there should, be, there should be a Yoda at the top of the grade. Told you I did. Or leave what you take with you. Stutcher. Stutcher, did I? <laughs> oh, boys. <clears throat> so, anyhow, as they escape from the caves, they return to the school library, and it seems that they have been gone for a few hours now. Oh, no. Cozy Glow is surprised that they're there, and is, well, uh, Silver Stream here spilled the beans on what happened to them. And it seems that Cozy here was jealous of their friendship and kind of tried to sabotage it and stuff. And Silverstream or Gallus says that they need to tell at least a responsible person about what they discovered. And Cozy Glow says, oh no, I'll be ruined. Please don't, please don't, please don't. And yeah, the student six here. Okay, yeah, I don't care anymore. I'm sleepy, so I'm going to go sleep. Well, yeah, near-death experiences, the adrenaline rush is is just wearing off. And you're kaput after that. Yeah, true that, true that. And with that, the student six here says, uh, we're going to sleep, we don't care anymore. And Cozy Glow here says, oh, uh, no problem. I'll just tell Hitmare Twilight that I need the help organizing the library. And you guys help. And you guys can get the extension on the exam. So yay, much awesomeness. But the way that she looks at the grades, like that is... Gary, what the hell? Well, my question is, after this, we, we'll we learn what she's been up to. And it's like, why is the Tree of Harmony just letting her run about willy-nilly? Yeah, yeah. But anywho, uh, sorry, I just need to end this. Uh, episode ends. Yay. Okay, now, uh, Silver, what do you have to say? I have to wonder, did the Tree try to show Cozy her greatest fear? And she's like, I fear nothing. The world fears me. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, God. <laughs> As I conquer it with a legion of spiders. <laughs> You're just going to keep going with that joke, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Oh, wow. There, There is a lot of question arise. Like, he, here's the episode where what? We're on number 22 now. So, yeah. Um, this, this episode here is kind of the catalyst of... There's something not right with Cozy. And Oh, I I knew there was something not right with Cozy the minute she greeted everyone and talked like a Shirley Temple. Mm. Yeah. And um that's the thing, because characters like this are either too innocent or there's something not right with them. And in this situation, there's something not right with them. Stay tuned for the new special movie. There's something about Cozy. <laughs> yeah. Oh boys, but anywho, uh, let's let's talk about something. Like, I I know it's a bit early for this, but um, who do you think has the elements? Like, we we know that the elements of harmony sense something within the student six, and we do see a bit of the elements rubbing off on them. So, do you have any idea who has who or who has what? Well, let's see. Who's the leader of the group, first off? <laughs> Gallus. Yes. I think he's inherited the element of magic. Or Not because he's, he's magical, but... Because he inspires friendship and is often the guiding light. He's the one who takes the most after Twilight. Really? No? You, you think that's Gallus? Including I... the lesson zero minus the insanity. Yeah, he freaks out a lot. Oh. But in his own way. I, I meant for, like, the, uh, you know, I'm going to hold my friends hostage because I oh. can't finish a friendship lesson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways. So... so he's magic. All right, okay. Obviously, the, the Pinkie Pie clone, uh... Silverstream? You know, Silverstream is, well, laughter. Hmm, okay, I can see that, I can see that. And I would say Senbar would be loyalty. Yes, he definitely demonstrates that. All right. Ocellus uh, would be kindness, or would that be Yona? Yo Whose generosity 
<laughs> That's the bigger question. Yeah, but here's the thing. Generosity can come in so many shapes and form. So, now, like, let's go for the easiest one. Kindness. So, probably would be Yona because she took the time to understand her fears. Well, in some cases, the fears kind of allayed her fear. Just came up and said, hello. Mm. Yeah, true that. But at least she didn't squash them. Yes, that's true. She didn't go on a... It is funny. She didn't go on a yak smash uh, mentality. Yep, it is true. But uh, what else? Uh, we, we've got who now? Um, Let's see here. S- Generosity. Smolder and uh, who's left? Ocellus. 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 Well, mm. okay. If Ocellus wanted to join Smolder for wait, tea we and forgot all that. about honesty. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm thinking because we got we okay. still got two left because <laughs> generosity and honesty. Those are the two we haven't okay, listed well, out. Well, I will say that uh, Smolder is honesty, as she has to admit that brutal. she that she. Well, yeah, she can be brutally honest in some regards, but also honest with herself. Okay. Uh, just acknowledging, yeah, I like some frilly frou frou stuff. All right. And this, and she was honest with Ocellus when she realized that the truth will set her friend free. <laughs> and uh, Ocellus was generous with wanting to be a part of the Tea Party, but you know the good Tea Party, not the political Tea <laughs> Party, which is which is just insane. All right. Okay. Here's a bit of a spoiler because when we reach the season's end. We get to see the main or the student six get colors like Goku because he has always been colored. Yay. Look at that white. So yeah, you're right guys with Gallus because he has a pinkish to purple glow towards him. Shouldn't we discuss this like after I know, the season finale? But this or? is fun to talk about okay. it now. We're so close. Okay, okay. Well, then I could go double spoiler on you. Oh. For, because it's for season nine. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Oh, no, no, no. Season nine's yes, not out yes, yet. Yes, yes, So we won't we'll talk it. Well, well, it turns out that Yona's the element of spider. <laughs> 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 okay, let's go for the final thoughts before you crack me up. Woo! <sighs> so, Silva, what do you think? Spiders! Well, uh, <laughs> Yes, I, I think we've rediscovered a meme that I, I, I didn't know I'd get to freak Norman out with uh, with just referencing spiders. <laughs> uh, you don't remember the face paint. That's the thing. The face paint, man. <laughs> yes, and the, and the skeleton gloves. <laughs> but uh, I, I enjoyed this episode mostly because the student six were the highlight of the season. And it's kind of funny because if you ask me well, how about the main six as teachers? It's actually kind of disappointing. And like I said with this episode, I really wish Twilight and friends could have helped the students overcome their fears. But instead, it's the Tree of Harmony that seems to have the most direct impact on them and the most proactive role in teaching them. So while the, while the School of Friendship, I feel, was overall a weakness of the season, the students in that school were a strength. So there's there's a bit of weirdness for you. I think my favorite uh, my favorite challenge to overcome was Silver Stream and the uh, Storm King. Not so much because I'm I still don't buy into the Storm King was this really awful guy. He seemed too easy to overcome in the long run. Are you referencing the movie he- only, or are you not including the comics? The comics were a very different story, and a, in my eyes, a very different presentation of the Storm King. All right, yeah. Just, just have to put it out there because the Storm King in the comics, he was rather interesting. He was kind of evil and manipulative. Like he, he was a villain. How do I put this? He did stuff just because he could do it, and even when he did stuff and won, he didn't want anything. Like he just took it. These were really good challenges. Yes, the, I do want to make all manner of Yoda jokes. <laughs> Stealing my thing, you are. So your asses, I will. <laughs> Not a curse word, asses. <laughs> oh, boy. So, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Spiders, a legion there are. <laughs> so, anyway, Sappy, what about you? 
Spiders! Spiders! A healthy region of spiders! I don't remember the meme that much. I just remember that Josh made me capitalize it on one of his reviews a long time ago. Anyways, I honestly don't have really much to incorporate into final thoughts. Oh, okay, here's the thing. Um, Silver said something interesting, which was uh, which was the challenge slash fear that you, he liked the most, and he said it was Silver Stream. And what about yourself? Well, the sh- the smolder thing was pretty funny. So smolder for you then, all right? Yes. All right. And as for me, very much. <laughs> and as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I like the interaction of the students. Like, here's the thing. I I think Silver hit it on the uh, hit the nail on the head when he mentioned that the school was disappointing, but the students inside it were amazing and fascinating. And I have to agree with that. And the only reason why I can think of that we like that is because we introduced two new characters and they're just not throwaway characters. And sometimes in ponies, throwaway characters are pretty awesome too. But in this one, we get to grow with them and understand their well characteristics and motivations. So we all uh, kind of know that Smolder is into cute things, or Celis is afraid of being evil and whatnot, and so on. So, getting new characters, getting to see them in action is just fun all around. Would you agree with that, Silver? Yes, indeed. As for the episode itself, I highly enjoyed it. Like I mentioned before, seeing students do stuff is awesome, and I wish they did more with that. Like, what, in the whole season 8 of 26 episodes, we only get a few of them. And they had so much potential. Like, all of the potentials. And as for my favorite, uh, what you might call this, fear slash test, I would say Gallus. It's a, it's a rather simple one, but he was the catalyst for the whole thing of to get the ball rolling so yeah that, that was a lot of fun so anywho silver what are we going to review next week well it's time to switch back to yan comics ah as well we, we still have some work to play through and it's time to go back to that retro 80s fashion with friendship is magic issue 64 yeah, yeah. let's go back old school y'all with their mullets and bell bottoms and Shoulder pads. Yo, diggity. And I didn't exist during this generation. <laughs> oh, tis am. Yeah. So <laughs> let's go and let's go back in time and review yeah, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic issue 64. Yay, this is a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. Any price really did a great job in this one. So yeah. Yes, let's do the time warp again. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that was a Rocky Horror picture reference. Yes. So, anywho. Yay! I got something right for once. Yeah. So, anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebeastwithgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill. The same for DeviantArt. If you do a search for After the Fact or Silver Quill, you will find my channel. And every Wednesday, you can find me writing an editorial or comic review on Equestria Daily. And every Friday, you can see a post for Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight. Nice. Those are always fun to watch. And also, Seppi, what about you? You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and other places around the net under the name Anne May Christie. You'll find me doing artwork and begging for money because I am poor. But also at BabsCon, if you just happen to be there this year, I'll be under Table H5. Yay, so folks, go give her money and get stuff. Those Bayo prints are really nice. Although... I don't know if you should say you'd be under the table because, you know. I'll be sounds, at the table. Yeah, it sounds illegal. <laughs> Very under. illegal. Uh, it, no, it, under the table would be selling nude versions of those Bayonetta prints, which I'm not going to be doing. Wink, wink, nudge, yeah, nudge. Yeah, that's why I say you don't, you don't want to say you don't want to say that you're going under the table to sell something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Wink, wink. That, that or you're really drunk. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Is Manga going to be there? Yes. Uh, not going to say it. Safi. 
Are you drunk? You illegal? better not. <laughs> oh no, it's Norman. Norman, what? Really? I didn't I, say I, anything. I, did I am shocked and appalled. As am I. <laughs> Harumph. Harumph indeed. You're set. Shun, You're set. shun, shun. Shun, shun, shun with the Legion of Spiders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where was I again? Oh, yeah, tables. Mm. Oh. <clears throat> A legion of spiders that go wee wee wee. So, anywho, um, also please send us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitch Radio. Uh, for YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. Uh, we have a Facebook, go like it, and you can also reach us on PointyLife.com. Uh, links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show and this insanity, you can do so at patreon.com slash MDS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am shocked and appalled. I am also shocked and appalled and disgusted. Hey, we'll shun him. Shun! And we will guys catch you next week with another insane episode of the Show. See ya. Spiders! Shun! Shun. Let's shun it. Rex yes. shun it too.